Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. In this video we aim to do a lunar flyby contract and a lunar impactor contract and then we'll see where we go from there and possibly lunar orbit and, and beyond. But first we need to get a CubeSat over to the moon and of course eventually we are not going to be able to rely solely on CubeSats. Uh, to do everything. Eventually we'll aim to send people up and well Kerbals, Kerbals of people too, and uh, you know station parts and all that so we can't infinitely take advantage of really tiny probes and I have not made a uh, antenna for the CubeSats that has perfectly long range. Yeah, they're, they're pretty long range. I don't know exactly what this amounts to. Well it says 80 million kilometers of DSN, which is basically sort of like, uh, and this one is 25 million kilometers with DSN level 3. But DSN level 3 is 3 tracking station upgrades, so that's going to take a while. So I don't think, this one might be able to get to another planet, but in general it's not so easy. So yeah, we will need larger satellites with larger communication parts and everything beyond the moon. But here I am adding a new stage here so that we can make sure that we get to the moon properly because I don't know if we have patch comics right now. I'll have to check outside. I don't see the building upgrades on this build list. Maybe that means we don't have it uh, don't have any building upgrades. I'm not sure. So we'll see. I'm got unlocked this 100 Newton thruster and this is just uh it's an engine and we are going to fill that up. Well, they'll need to be high pressure. So we're adding a third stage here, basically. I'll just do aluminum. I don't know if it makes too much difference. That's got a lot of delta V now. <laughs> An embarrassing amount of delta V, you might say. But uh, how does that affect the stages down below? But somebody noted in the comments that that's not really the delta V. Uh, the thing is that each part in Kerbal Space Program, even though this reads a certain mass, the real mass is, well, it's not really indicating the real mass there either. The real mass, the effective mass in terms of delta V in Kerbal Space Program is 2 kilograms per part, no matter what the part is. You know, we could sum it up. Maybe it ends up being less than 31 kilograms, though. It's tough to say. Well, it's probably more than that, and so we probably have less delta V than is indicated here. So just a uh, note. I'm contemplating whether to use the CubeSat RCS now. The volume of the tanks for that would not be good enough. We need, and let me move that accelerometer and thermometer. I'll put the CubeSat RCS right at the top, and the reason for that is leverage, basically. So I'm going to sneak some, that, that'll that use uh, nitrogen, and we'll sneak some extra nitrogen in the main tank down here, otherwise 4.6 units gets used too quickly. It's, I don't know why it's dry masses, well I guess we can't really make it any lighter, uh, but it's only 5.8 grams of nitrogen, so that's not good enough. Anyway, let's get the thermometer and accelerometer in here. Okay, so instead of having just MMH and Mon3, you'll add some nitrogen. I don't know how much help it'll be, but maybe we can not rely on a reaction. We don't have a reaction wheel in here. So the hope is that the little nitrogen RCS will be good enough so that we don't have to add a reaction wheel. But maybe the nitrogen will be used up too quickly. Maybe we can put 2,000. I mean, that if we had the 2,800, that would look like plenty of delta V to get to the moon and even make orbit around the moon. But we probably don't have that. Anyway, at least it's not expensive. We will give it a go and see what happens. The CubeSat RCS, by the way, is um, I think only one Newton RCS. 
Uh, yeah, one Newton RCS, 82 seconds ISP with nitrogen. I mean, if we wanted to put these 40 Newton thrusters, that would be better. Better efficiency, but they are relatively big, so... Maybe this will work out. There is uh, 40 Newton thrusters on the second stage, so that we can reorient for our transfer. So out here, still see... Oh, we do have the tracking station upgrade going on, so that'll take 466 days though. And we'll try it without the tracking station upgrade first. There are certain principles that we can use to aim for the moon without having patch conics unlocked. But I've messed up on that before. It is July 22nd, year 2000. We're still in our first year. Um, maybe we should speed up the... The tracking station upgrade. Let's see. So hold on. That would be tech. I guess that'd be the R and D. So if we increase R and D, that would increase the tracking station upgrade. No. Not seem to. VAB. Yes, VAB. Even though it's under tech. The VAB upgrade increases the speed of it. Hmm. Okay, well anyway, got a little bit fooled there. But let's launch. So, lining up with the moon. What we want to do is see... Sort of when the moon is at its greatest angle. It's sort of like that. After that, you know, if you turn the camera, it starts to get flatter. It just so happens to be at the peak right now. And what we want is for the KSC to be where its peak is at, so over on that side. And that's because the sort of inclination of the moon relative to Earth's equator is about 28 degrees. And Cape Canaveral is at 28 degrees. So all we have to do is make sure that we're right at its peak with respect to the equator and then we can head on because we'll end up, uh, well, hopefully you'll see. It's tough to describe actually. It's better to do with pictures. So as we launch out of Cape Canaveral, we'll be headed south basically. And so it'll match, you could, you could actually see the sort of suborbital line that we have right now somewhat matches the the moon. So that's the idea. Okay. So with that being the idea, throttle up. SAS we do have because of the little star tracker. Ignition. And launch. So this is just modified from the Delta rocket that we had in the previous video. I could probably use MechJeb to find out my relative inclination, but that's probably cheaty without the tracking station upgrade, so I'll avoid that. Okay. Flattening out. Preparing RCS for the transition. And separation. And ignition. And fairings. Well, we won't be able to complete the transfer on just this engine. Make sure feed pressure is okay and everything. Let's see. It doesn't look quite right though. I think I could have done better. Yeah, it's a little bit lopsided. Without patch conics, that's going to be a problem. I really ought to just fix this <laughs> instead of waiting for GM Studios to do this one. Uh, Got to use the time to apoapsis number. I think we'll be a little bit lopsided here. Okay, that'll do. 279 by 181. And we are a little bit lopsided. So we want to transfer 
so that the moon will be over there. So we should start out over here in the dark. Hopefully we'll have some comms. It would be helpful if I extended everything. All right. It's all extended. Prograde would be good. Uh, maybe we can start out now. We've got comms and everything. Seems like a good time to start. Okay, so just going prograde and go. We might as well use up the RCS on this stage as much as possible. I think we carried too much of that. I feel like we carried too much liquid oxygen, maybe? Uh, sorry, kerosene. Seems to be an imbalance. Or maybe there's just boil off on liquid oxygen, probably. Well, the RCS thrusters on here combined, the ones that are facing down, actually have more thrust than the next engine. They are 160 newtons combined, whereas the next engine is just 100. So we might as well go ahead and use them. But they're not accelerating us very much. Uh, maybe it's better to dump the stage. Uh, ah, we lost comms. Well, we're using them now. <laughs> I can't turn them off. That's fine. Even if they expend, they're not going to overshoot us. We could probably go around once. And the moon won't be too far out of position. Tough to say when we're going to get comms back, though. Probably Hawaii. But that might be over here-ish. So we're probably gonna have to just go around and continue. Ah, yeah, we got comms, but yeah. That's too far away from periapsis. Okay, we'll go around. Okay, well we have good enough comms over here. Okay, we have to stage. And how's that nitrogen consumption? It's not too bad. If we only had four units, it'd be bad, but... Okay, go. Hmm, that comm line is getting stretched, though. Oh, we lost comms. No, what's gonna happen? This might have too much delta V. Hopefully it won't deliver it quickly enough. I've throttled down, but that's not gonna do anything. Oh, there we go. All right, we shut. We've got comms, and we shut down. But we can continue burning for a little bit. It's a bit of a stretched line there. You know what? Uh, maybe I'll shut down until we get something better. Let's see. I don't know if we're gonna get anything better. Oh, uh, let's just go. It'll be too long a wait if we wait the whole orbit now. Again, KOS could be your friend in this situation where you could just program the thing. Okay, that's looking too much actually. <laughs> We've overdone it. We've overdone it. Retrograde, please. These little one Newton nitrogen thrusters. This thing has 40 ignitions altogether, which is probably more limited than a 100 Newton thruster needs to be, but. If you wanted RCS, you would have asked for it. We are nowhere near the right inclination, though. Okay, well, that's sort of a tangency thing, but I don't see the moon reaching out and grabbing us like that. Let's find out. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, well, sun down. That's how we need it for our solar panels. Seems like the delta V reading on this was accurate enough. Any chance that this is going to be close enough? The moon does have a reasonably large sphere of influence, mind you. Oh, uh, we're a little bit late. Uh, oh, 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 we got, we're flying by, we're not flying by enough though. 
If we really have 1,600, we could stop our orbit in its tracks, though. So maybe we can do it? I don't know. Got a line back. In this case, that's no problem. Still thinking about whether I need to tune down this relay antenna or not. Okay, well, we don't even have the lunar orbit contract, but we're going to try and get to orbit anyway. Maybe, well, I'm not orbit. I actually want to be an impactor, so we just need to smash into the surface. Either way, we need to slow down completely. Well, we can do some science. Uh, the gravity scan... Well, anything with the relay antenna takes a lot of charge, so hold on to that for a sec. Let's log temperature. Maybe that won't be so bad. Yeah. Gotten some signs. I don't know if that count. Yeah, it did. Counted. Okay. Not, well, not quite yet, though. We've got... Positive periapoapsis uh, and about 80,000 kilometers we will have made orbit around the moon. We've made orbit, but don't tell anyone I want to get the lunar orbit contract after this, so we will keep that top secret. And there we go. That is a smashing trajectory. Oh, oh, we lost light. Oh, gosh darn it. Well, it doesn't matter. We've got the science. And we just need to have a vessel state that's at the right altitude and then get destroyed. So I think it'll be alright. It would have been nice to do some science, but... Okay, that's 5,000 uh, 5, kilometers. Oh, we've got... Uh, well, uh, it was just smart ASS automatically doing it. Okay, we've got the flyby contract done. We should really clear these up. Yeah. Okay. So flyby contract is done. We just need to impact and even though Smart ASS is still a minor correction. Oh, we've got comms now. Okay. Um well let's just go sundown execute. So that we maintain power. We well we need to accumulate some power in order to do the gravioli or accelerant whatever you want to call it. Temperature high over the moon is not biome dependent. If you zoom in really close to these platforms in the CubeSat, you'll notice that that is an Arduino there. <laughs> and that's just an oversized one of the thermometers that go with the Arduinos. Let's get some power. Okay, well, let's do that Gravioli transmission. High over the Midlands. We. Barely had enough power previously. Yep, barely had enough power this time too. We'll see if we can do some low over science. Uh, we could probably do the thermometer. Let's see. Still high over. Got to be low over for very long. Oh, we lost comms anyway. Okay. Here goes nothing. And sh smack, smack, and it counted. Good. You never know. Uh, if, if between one frame and another, it might not read that we got low enough. But you know, we ended up at negative eight meters, so that should be satisfactory. All right, back to space center. We should be rolling in dough now. Okay, well, not rolling in dough. Two hundred eighty-three thousand isn't exactly rolling in dough. At least we already had the tracking station upgrade queued. I think we should just get the mission control upgrade so we can do flight planning would be good. Get that queued as well. And then we'll spend a little on more upgrade points. Let's get the VAB up to 1. So now what? Orbit I suppose. There's some satellite contracts we could get into a specific orbit. That might be more lucrative. Let's see which one is better. Oh, we could do a Mars flyby and Venus flyby now. Um, geostationary orbit is there. We could do the flyby and impactor contracts again. They're repeatable. But basically we can get the orbit contract here and that'll be 78,000 and 78,000. 
this moon fly uh sorry moon orbit contract but it's a specific orbit so that might be a little bit trickier especially the inclination part uh that sums up to about 168,000 that's 160ish thousand they're still not requesting any additional interesting parts uh, is that true for all of these yeah so i'm i'm figuring that that aspect of it isn't working quite right that idea that they can ask for a thermometer or something else like that should be something doable but isn't this is close enough to 160 and it's a general progression kind of contract so I think we should do this first. I mean, these don't provide that much more. Uh, in fact, not necessarily more at all. Maybe 2,000 more. So the failure on this one is rough, rougher than these, but we have time. Well, we only have a year, actually. <laughs> I'd say we have time, but at least we already built the rocket or tested the rocket that can do it, even though we like barely made it. Hmm, maybe we should just wait until patch Connix. That was pretty darn close. That was pretty close to being messed up right there. The... Hmm. Let's see. We can pick up that contract anytime. Let me warp until Engineering 101 is complete. I think the tracking station will take 310 days. The contract is us 365. So after the contract, uh, after the tracking station is complete, we'd probably still have enough time to build another rocket before we run out of time. So I think it's okay to take it now and give it a go. Our rocket is fairly cheap. We could also put some more upgrade points in with the advance on it. Let's see, can we do upgrade? No, we can't do upgrade points in here. Let's go back outside. We'll do some more upgrade points and then proceed. 1.3 build points per second. Okay. So that's a little bit safer. Okay, so I'm gonna make a minor modification by reducing the hydrazine tanks for the RCS thrusters here. I think we can just go with... Well, one unit might be too small. Be a little bit bad about that. Okay, well, that should be fine. How much is that? 1.2. Um, Alright, we'll see. Now will give us more Delta V out of that. There's a good argument that we had too much nitrogen. And overall, we could probably make this smaller. Mm, but this is pretty efficient with MH and Mon3 anyway. About as efficient as that kerosene. I guess we could add some MLI layers down there. Let's go with 20. That'll reduce the boil off of the liquid oxygen so that doesn't get wasteful. And yeah, uh, we'll go with let's say 1200 nitrogen. I'll scale it down in a sec. And MHM Mon3 is the rest. And let's reduce the length a bit. I don't know if there's a peak amount of delta V we can get out of this. Or well, whether scaling up will just keep going. Yeah, technically, that goes down. Something like this will be optimal, but I don't think I'm going to stretch it like that. And maybe we'll keep it to 1200. Okay. So that is our new delta. And we'll see how that works. CubeSats make it easy, but so did Explorer 6, uh, which I abused a lot in RP0 slash RP1. Explorer 1, of course, is always good too. So this whole using really tiny satellites to do the moon missions is not new. I even landed an Explorer 6 on the surface of the moon, if I recall. 
we've got a lot of science. Let's see. Are we we've got survivability there, but we've got seventy science. Let me queue some more up. Um, so, uh, we we should keep going down here. I really need like solar panels. The science Junior will be interesting. That antenna would be good actually, so that we're not using just a CubeSat antenna. I wonder where the Communitrons went. Isn't that weird? Where where are the Communitrons? <laughs> uh, I'll have to find out where what happened to them. And they should have been around here somewhere. This is that weird pod that Aro made that I don't know the logic of, but it's there. That's probably priced wrong too. Pretty sure. That's definitely priced wrong. Um, did it? Yeah, it doesn't say that I priced it. Yeah, I'll need to remember to price the pods. I wasn't really intending on using the pods. I think we need different pods because sending one or two people up is not normally the thing these days. But yeah, we should just have those be priced properly anyway. So we're unlocking basic science as a way of getting to electrics and stuff like that. And maybe we should get general rocketry as well since we have 20 science. Okay, so we'll go like that for now. We could have saved it for the electrics, but we'll probably get more science from the moon. There's probably a lot of science to get from the moon. Okay, roll out. Okay, once again, I have to figure out the moon. Okay, well, that suborbital line is seemingly in line with the moon. Hopefully that'll work out. We'll find out. Okay, throttle up. We're just a little bit off of pointing straight up. That's weird. Okay, ignition. And launch. I should paint this. <laughs> I mean, well, I don't. I don't think we'll be using it too. We'll be using it too much more. We'll see. Nifty little ten-ton thing. It's it's basically our electron rocket right now. Okay, we're in the post 4G regime here. We are flat. We are past 10 Gs. Fifteen. There we go. Obviously, there may be practical problems with that whole business, but... Okay, getting ready for shutdown, and... Shutdown, 248 by 171. Okay, how does it look? Uh, that looks pretty good. That looks much more in line. I mean, it's not perfect still. If we use the MechJab relative inclination display, it'd be better, but I think that'll do. Okay, and we've got 2,100 left in this stage, and then we still have to use the next stage for the rest. Time warping. Comms will be an issue again. I don't get a super duper sense that that polar satellite is helping at all. <laughs> uh, yep. And we're going to have comms through Reunion Reunion for a little bit, but I don't think it's going to be over. Well, there's something here in the Indian Ocean for us. Maybe we should start now. Uh, prograde, please. We start now-ish. It's probably okay. All right, we should be pointed in the right direction. Go! The kerosene and oxygen look a lot more balanced now that we put the MLI layers on. Okay, we're close to the end of the stage. Let's see, comms are still good. We'll be right overhead coming up here. Okay, I'm not gonna continue with this stage. Let's just proceed. Cave is warping. Keeping an eye on that comm line. Might be getting there a little bit too quickly. 
And it looks like a smaller angle than I was probably aiming for. Yeah, that seems a little bit quick. Okay, shut down. Uh, a little bit more. Seems like it'll be past us. Let's see. Well, let's make sure we're pointed at the sun first. We apparently have a luxurious amount of delta V. And with the solar panels we have time, as long as we stay charged this time. Oh, must go faster, must go faster. Ah, uh, we missed it, we missed it. Should we, I was aiming for the comm site. I didn't want to wait, but we probably should have waited a little bit longer before starting the burn. Anyway, we can hang out. Um, let's make doubly sure that we're going to be pointing at the sun throughout the whole thing. So SAS relative rotation sun. Okay. That should be more reliable. I'm sure Magjib would have had it fine, but this works during time warp. Okay, we've swung around, out again. I mean, we can kill time until we get the tracking station upgrade. That's still 210 days away. This... hold on, hold on, hold on. I think if we burn a little bit prograde here, it'll be better. I think by the time we get to Apoapsis, the moon will be over here. So if we burn a little bit further up, then as we swing past Apoapsis, we'll be able to hit the moon. Eh, just about like that, hopefully, will delay us up there just long enough. Let's see. Oh, let's go back to sun position. Might not even even have been necessary. We've got sort of an inclination. Our periapsis is actually under five thousand kilometers, which was the flyby level, and actually, and the maximum periapsis there. So we are within that. Why the PE ends up floating there? I have no idea. We do have to collect science again. Um, as far as comms. Visually, the PE, I mean, it's tough to say, uh, probably around here-ish. We can tell by our altitude outside. Um, maybe after we pass by the moon, we can do the capture burn. There's the moon. Or we might be high enough that we could avoid the moon like that. Okay, this would be good enough. Of course, we could have done a real radial burn to get closer to Moon to capture, and that might have helped, but I don't think this is going to be too much of a problem with the Delta V that we're indicating right now. One hundred Newton engine. Lunar missions on a budget. It is a relay satellite, so it might help with communications if we kept it nice and high up here. We're a little bit lopsided, but as soon as we get a 5,000 kilometer, under a 5,000 kilometer apoapsis. I guess it only said periapsis, but... Okay, it accepts that. Yeah, it only really said periapsis. Okay. So, any experiment. Let's see. Well, gravity scan we've done. Thermometer I know we've done. Oh, I'll check. Right. So, we'll wait. Uh, I'm sure we'll cross something other than Midlands soon. Highlands! Okay, we can transmit the Highland science. And once again, we'll have just enough power. Yes. All right. So we got the contract complete, lunar orbit, and that is our moon stuff for this episode. Next time we'll try and do something different and see how it goes, but 
Can we really go to another planet? I don't know. I think maybe commsats would be nice. We should take advantage of all the satellite contracts to put up some additional commsats to save ourselves from future communication blackouts. So maybe that's the plan. We're going to have CubeSat constellations like everybody's putting up these days. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.